Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sands of Vool, and in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to do battle damage or wear and tear to concrete or stone structures. So for a couple of videos we've been having a look at how to make windows in some stone structures like you can see on the screen now, and in them I had a couple of people requesting how to make this sort of pitted or textured walls that we can see here and for these window sills, so I thought I'd do a quick tutorial having a look at that. Now before we go any further, I normally do the standard YouTuber please subscribe deal at the end of the video, but I'm going to do this here for one reason and one reason alone, and that is that assumedly you are here because you want to see some sort of wear and tear on stone structures and how to sculpt it. And for that reason I want to mention that next video, which is on Monday, so that's Monday the 28th of March, I'm going to be showing something on that topic that is really, really cool. So if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, I really suggest you do that now and hit that bell button so that on Monday you get a notification and a reminder to come and check out the video and you don't have to go hunting for it. Obviously at that point you could just get rid of the subscription if it's something that doesn't interest you, but trust me, it's going to be really, really good. Now with that done, let's get straight into this. So I've got a clean version of my gothic window here and you'll see that this has been merged together into one solid object. Now I have kept that bit separate. That is only to demonstrate something later that might be useful to people that aren't used to using sculpting tools because this is going to revolve around sculpting. Now I have done a few videos on sculpting previously, but if you haven't watched those, that's no problem. I'm going to cover everything here, although some of it will be in slightly less detail, but either way it will be able to get you through. And if you are interested in a couple of things, you can always have a look at those previous videos on sculpting and I'll put the links in the description. So the first thing we need to do is press tab and we need to go into sculpt mode which for this pie menu is just there if you've got machine tools otherwise you can just go to the top here and select sculpt mode and that will have us sculpting the object that we've previously had selected and we've got our brushes at the side which I'm going to pull out here so you can read what they are. Now straight away if you've seen any of my other videos you'll know that we're going to need to do something to this object to either make it sculptable which is to remesh it or we're going to have to use die and topo. Now in this instance I'm going to use die and topo because I don't want to remesh the entirety of this object. It is fairly large and it would make it rather sizable. So I'm going to turn die and topo on and I'm going to click down and have a look at what my resolution is and I have said this before but it's a bit of trial and error I'm going to put this to about 12 and essentially what Dian Topo does is instead of remeshing the entire object it's going to mean that we'll remesh the areas where we sculpt and otherwise if we don't do that we won't get the detail that we want in fact we'll probably get no detail because there won't be enough vertexes to manipulate and we're going to have a look at how we create some relatively natural looking wear and tear so I'm going to go and use the scrape brush, which is just here. Now, as with all brushes, we can just press F to change our size of our brush. And I should have said that when I went into Dian Topo here, if you haven't used this before, you're probably going to come into this and it will have relative detail like I'm just showing now. You want to change this to constant detail. Otherwise, you're going to find this weird effect that when you zoom in and out, it adds different levels of detail to the mesh that you're creating, which is really annoying to be perfectly honest as far as I'm concerned. So I'd suggest you go to that constant detailing. So the scrape brush. Now, what we're going to do here is essentially we're just going to press down and scrape along any of these hard edges like these corners. At the moment, I've got the strength to one. I'm going to put that down a little bit. I'm in the region of 0.8. And other than that, we're just going to leave this alone. I can change the radius by pressing F and make it bigger or smaller. So I'm going to go to somewhere like that. And all I'm going to do is scrape along this edge. And you'll see what that does is it almost imagines that this edge is made of some sort of putty or clay. And I'm taking a sharp object, or even if it was plastic, and I'm scraping it against that object. So that will essentially smooth things out a little bit at the angle that I'm going at. So I'm just going to do little bits of that here and there. And you'll see what that does is that gives a relatively natural looking worn appearance. As if it's been there for a long time and you've had people maybe leaning on it or sitting on it. And it's just slowly gradually worn away. So this is quite a nice effect to use on most stone surfaces. I especially like this on things like stairs as it looks really good and it looks like people have just sort of walked along it and caught the edge of the stair as people have a tendency to do and obviously I can turn my strength up to make this stronger so it'll have a greater effect and it will sort of bite further into that surface or we could turn the strength down to have a lesser effect. Now I normally reserve this for things that are mostly at right angles so sort of bits like here 
and places like this corner would be a really good area to do. I should say that I am using a sculpting tablet for this. You don't need to. Most of the things that I'm doing today you could do with a mouse, but it is easier to get smoother results with a tablet and you do get a little bit more control. If you are interested, then I've put a couple of links in the description at the bottom for a cheap tablet that I used previously and the one that I'm currently using, which is a Wacom Cintiq 16. So it's really nice and it just adds a smooth effect to it. Now, one thing I will say with this or any sculpting is you've got to bear in mind the scale that you're looking at. For example, I zoomed in here and it looks a little bit grainy when you zoom in a lot, but you've got to not worry about that and just keep working with it because what you've got to realize is when you zoom out that realistically, this is for a 28 millimeter model and what you're seeing on screen is gonna be more than what's gonna be looked at when someone picks this up. They're just not gonna be able to look that closely at it. So that looks fine. Obviously you can get a greater detail with this if you turn the dial and topo up but for my purposes, that'd be totally unnecessary and it's just gonna make this object much larger in terms of file size. Now at this point, I want to go onto a different object, for example, this corner column. And if I tried to sculpt on this, because I left it as a separate object, which I said at the beginning, when I scrape along this, it doesn't actually do anything. So there's a couple of ways of dealing with that. The first is that you can do the standard thing of going out into object mode, selecting this, and then coming back into sculpt mode, but that's a bit tedious, it's quite long-winded. The other thing we could do is try and find the cube in our organizer at the top right-hand side, but that takes a little bit of trial and error. If you've only got two objects on your file, then that's quite easy. The quickest way to do it is if you put your mouse over the object you want to sculpt and click Alt and Q at the same time, and you'll see a quick flash, it then transfers you sculpting over to that, and you can go straight in and start getting sculpting on it. I will say though, as you can see here when I tried to sculpt on it, it does, or you do need to turn on Dian Topo for each object, and it'll come up with a standard warning, and then you can start sculpting at that point. So for example, I can start scraping along this edge here, maybe do a couple of little points there. And I'm gonna go back to our other object, so Alt and Q while the mouse is over it, and now I can go and do some things with this. So that's the first thing we can do. As I said, creating a nice smooth appearance like some natural wear and tear or something slowly rubbing against it over however many years. The other brush that's really useful to use for wear and tear on stone is clay strips. Now I've used that before in a previous video and as I said then, it creates a very, very nice texture. Again, I'm gonna have to turn Dian Topo back on. And in this instance, I want to sculpt into the mesh. If I come over and have a look at the tool menu here, you can see a picture of what this is meant to do, and it should, according to this, create something that sticks out. Now, I want to actually dig into the mesh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to come to the top here and press the minus button. So now it's gonna subtract from the mesh each time I use it. Now, I could have done this in a different way. I could have held down control as I was scraping along or as I held my mouse down, but as the only thing I'm gonna be doing is digging into this, it's gonna be a little bit of a waste of time to constantly be pressing that control button, or not really a waste of time, just annoying. So I'm gonna move around here, and I'm gonna start cutting into this. Now, as I do this a little bit more, you can see I've got a strength of about 0 0.6, so nothing too strong. And you'll see it's slowly digging into this, but it's got a lot more texture than the other brush. And if I keep working at this, then you're gonna get a really good looking corroded appearance. Now, this might be some sort of more violent impacts that have happened against it. For example, we'll have a look at how to make a shell crater in a second, but as I said, you can see it's got a much, much better texture to it. So you can see that next to the two, we've got here this scrape brush, which as we said, looks much smoother. This looking much more textured and sort of ground into that surface as if something's impacted it and chipped off the stone as opposed to the scrape brush, which looks like it's been slowly eroded away. So we can go around and apply this to the different edges. Again, I don't want to zoom in too far because it's not gonna look right because that's not what we're gonna see if we use it. And I can just apply this as I want and I can change the strength, maybe moving up or a little bit down to apply a greater amount of damage in less time. So really easy and quick to do. 
And actually, it's quite fun just sort of going around and playing around with this. Now, what I'm going to do here is make something that looks more like an impact of some sort of weapon. And what I'm going to want to do with this is start with a really high strength, somewhere as much as one. So we dig into this really, really quickly and easily. And you'll start to see here one of the problems with using the clay strips brush in that it's actually quite square. So if I start doing this, you'll start seeing it actually has a relatively square appearance to it. I'm actually going to zoom in a bit so it's a little bit clearer. And all I'm doing is going around here and you can see, as I said, it looks relatively square. Always remember to keep panning around so you can see how deep everything looks. I'm just going to dig in a little bit more there to get this looking right. Let's have another pan around and that's looking a little bit better. I could maybe go a little bit deeper. So that's looking pretty good. Now, when I say this looks square, what I'm going to do is just increase the size of my brush quite a bit by pressing F. And you'll see what I mean if I just do a dot somewhere here. So for example, if I go there, you can see this is made up of lots and lots of squares. And if I do that, it's fine. But when I do little dots or sort of little amounts, it has this horrible square look to it. It doesn't look like natural wear and tear. I'm just going to undo that because obviously we don't want any of that on our building. So we have to be a little bit careful with the size of our brush, keeping it relatively small. And also I try to keep my strength down a little bit unless I'm doing something really heavy like that hole. Normally nowhere more than 0.8, but again, it depends on what you want things to look like. So now I'm gonna start shaping out the outside of this hole. And normally you'll get a lot of chips surrounding the impact. So I'm just gonna go around this and make a relatively uneven looking mess leading towards the center and this will look like the layers of rock that have chipped away and the secret to having a really good effect with this is to not do big strokes but you can see if you have a look in the bottom left hand corner where it says what I'm doing and when I'm pressing the equivalent of the mouse button down which is me pushing down on the pen I actually do this in a relatively dotty way I don't keep my mouse on for long I can do it for little bits here but generally I then go over it with this dotty texture to create something that looks a little bit more messed up and is gonna hide that square appearance, which we saw when I did a larger brush size. So again, I'm gonna bring the strength down a little bit, maybe about 0.6. And I'm gonna start adding the extra wear that's gonna come off of this, the sort of random chips and just bits that might've happened over time after the impact crater was made because realistically this gives a corner which means you're more likely to get chipping afterwards and this is going to be telling really the story of this building is this something that happened a long time ago if it is then you're going to have more of this chipping that's been added to the edge of this as it's slowly torn away or other things have impacted against it or it might be that you've actually had this relatively recently, so you don't want to have a lot of this additional damage around the edge. And I'll keep adding little bits of this onto the building and the wall around it to just being that natural wear and tear that you would have got. And I'm gonna make sure I don't do too much, too concentrated in one place. So again, I'll come over here, make an area. You'll see because I've zoomed out, the brush size is having a much bigger effect and we can see how square this looks here. So I'm just gonna do this here. And you'll see again, I'm applying this really dotty texture. And as I said, over time, this actually takes away that square section that we saw to begin with. And actually it starts to look like something quite nice. And it gives again, this good texture that shows something that might be akin to what would happen over time as bits chip away. And you can see either the natural grain of the stone or all the little bits of texture that you'd get if this was concrete. And if you want to do some bits that are a bit more extreme, again, just put up the strength, do a little bit there that's a little bit more. And then I'll lower that strength down to again, something about 0 0.6 and just soften out the edges. Or I could not if I wanted to leave something relatively harsh. You can see this bit still looks a bit square there, so I'm just gonna start dealing with that. I will say, and it's very difficult for me to describe this, but as I'm doing this, what I'm not doing is I'm not tapping downwards. I've just grabbed my phone here to try and demonstrate this, so hopefully this isn't gonna to be too wobbly. But what I don't want to do is just tap down as if I'm pecking at this. What I want to do is make sure to get this really good texture is I want to do these little taps, but each time I tap, I want to be flicking in a different direction. 
So I'm almost going up and down and left and right each time I tap on the screen. So it gets a much more random texture. So I'm not just going up and down like a woodpecker. Each time I've got a little bit of direction to it and that's going to get a much better texture as we start adding this together. Now I'm doing this relatively slowly. We've got a relatively weak brush, but you can see exactly what's happening here as this builds up and I keep going in different directions. We'll see how that's come out. If uh, that gives anyone a headache because it's uh, juddering around a lot, my apologies. But you can see really quickly, we've got a really nice texture here. It hasn't taken long. And it, like I said, it's really fun to fiddle around with this and do sort of little bits of damage. And sometimes you'll get two bits that you decide to sort of amalgamate together. And you also really want to think about where you're going to get this wear and tear. For example, if I Alt Q to come into this. And again, I'm on a different brush, so I need to put Darn Topo on. And Obviously these edges here, these corners are much more likely to get this wear and tear on them. So I'm gonna really focus on those bits. Start with the initial damage. Okay, getting some really, or the deeper bits in there, not worrying too much about this sort of square section that sort of comes with it. And then I start my tappy little effect to start getting the texture that's gonna make this look a lot more like stone or rock. You can see this as you let it sort of develop quite naturally, you start getting these, it's almost like painting if you paint miniatures where you're trying to increase the texture and you do these random little dots and lines and they start coming together to create something quite nice. So again, we've got that there and it looks really good. It looks really like stone and when it's printed, as long as you've done it deep enough, so as I said, I always do look around this to make sure it's gonna have an effect. You can get some really nice effects here got there that looks a little bit too square so I'm just gonna start working away at that and let's finish that off by coming down here again where that wear and tear should more naturally be found and you can see if you want to get rid of some of that sort of squareness here I've zoomed in a little bit so I can start working on that and obviously the brush stays relative to the size of your screen so now effectively compared to the size of the object this is now a smaller brush so I haven't actually had to change my brush size here. I just zoomed in a little bit. Okay, and let's zoom out and looking really nice. So there we have it, a quick introduction to creating texture on rock surfaces and stone using some sculpting tools. Essentially, we just stick to the scrape brush and the clay strip brush. We get some really, really nice effects. As a final reminder, do please subscribe and hit that bell button so you get informed about when more videos are available. And if you enjoyed this or think you're going to use it, please do hit that like button. It really helps me out with making more people see the channel because the more likes, the more YouTube seems to show it off.